Happy holidays, y'all, and welcome back to Harry the Horse Barbecue. And this holiday season, we are making a smoked beef rib wellington. I know that sounds crazy, but we're gonna smoke up some dino ribs, cook them until they're tender and the bone slides out. Then we'll make a traditional duck cell, wrap up the beef rib in a traditional Wellington fashion, and have a delicious beef Wellington at the end of the day. Fine dining meets holiday meets barbecue. I got your back. Let's get it. Hurry the horse barbecue. Beef Wellington is a traditionally fancy dish that may be a little too fancy for this horse. A traditional beef Wellington is a Chateaubriand or the center cut portion of a beef tenderloin. The tenderloin is usually seared off, smoked off, or grilled off to build a nice crust and nearly cook it all the way through. The tenderloin is then wrapped in layers of duck cell, prosciutto, some people even use crepes, and then a nice layer of puff pastry on the outside, wrapped up, baked off, and you've got a beautiful Wellington at the end of the day. Normally Wellington are tossed with some sort of veal demi-glaze or some veal reduction sauce to add a nice luxurious, rich, and fatty sensation to the dish. Now a traditional Wellington is all fine and well, <laughs> but I actually thought I would add a smoked element to this dish and a beef rib seems to work just as well as anything. So I'm going with dino ribs instead of a Chateaubriand. So in order to make this smoked beef rib Wellington, we gotta go shopping for some beef ribs. Let's go. Beef ribs. These beef ribs are all wrapped up in this paper because I picked them up from my local butcher called Marbled Meat Shop. Beef ribs aren't the easiest thing to find, especially during the holidays when prime rib and tenderloins are everywhere. So I'm going a bit untraditional with this method. And bones. I also picked up some beef bones from Marbled Meat Shop because I'm going to be making my own beef stock to reduce down to sort of a beef demi-glaze to make a rich sauce to go with our beef rib wellington. So enough horsing around, let's get these beef ribs out of the pack. Damn, look at how big this is. And it's looking beautiful. These beef ribs are looking incredible, but there's always one major thing that happens when I get beef ribs from nearly any location, and that is this top muscle on the rack of the beef ribs. This muscle is lean and just prevents the actual beef ribs from becoming barky and delicious. So we're gonna remove it. We're gonna cook this up as a beautiful little pit snack. But at this point, I've got a lot of fat on top of these beef ribs that I'm going to trim up. And I think that's just gonna about do it. I like to leave a little bit of a fat cap on my beef ribs, help it render down, build a nice crispy exterior. So I'm not removing the fat cap entirely, but you can see I've got just a wee bit of fat on top, beautiful meat exposed. The most crucial step to making this process quicker and easier, especially when we're gonna wrap this to make our Wellington, that is to separate the bone. I'm gonna separate these beef ribs into three individual beef ribs. They're gonna get barky all the way around, and that way we can have maximum texture inside of our beef wellington. Who's not gonna want this in their beef wellington? I'm thinking this is gonna be the ideal beef rib for this wellington. Last thing to do is hit these beef ribs with our seasoning, which is gonna be simply some Chud's Barbecue SPG. And the reason we're going with SPG is because it's got that two parts pepper, one part salt, one part granulated garlic. I don't wanna over salt the beef ribs because we're adding prosciutto. Prosciutto is notoriously salty and I don't wanna make this dish way too salty to handle at the end of the day. We're going on the back all around. Not gonna worry too much about the backside just because we know that membrane's gotta come off before we put this into the beef wellington. Now this rub is gonna build some ultimate bark. We're gonna have a super barky beef rib at the center of our Wellington. In my opinion, having a barked up beef rib at the center of our Wellington is gonna add a lot more texture, flavor, and just overall deliciousness to this dish. And again, we just got that one part salt, so these ribs can handle a lot of seasoning. And these beef ribs are all ready to go. These beef ribs are all seasoned up and they're ready for the cooker. And so are these bones. So let's go fire up the cooker. Actually, the fat sack is running at about 225 degrees right now. I spent about an hour burning down wood into coals, and we are just about there where the wood is igniting into flames, and it's been a struggle. But we're not gonna let that stop us from spreading some holiday cheer in the form of a smoked beef Wellington. Anywho, enough horsing around. Let's go grab those beef ribs, those bones, and that beef slab, and get them on the cooker. Let's go. 
I've got too many things in my hands. Smoked beef ribs for our Wellington and some other goodies ready to go. Gotta go big for the holiday season. Let's get it on. Up and under. Okay, beef ribs going on. Our little beef slab. Can't forget our bones for our beef demi. So we've got some really gnarly looking beef bones and some of these gnarly looking tendons. My butcher said these will help make the stock super gelatinous. So we're going on with these. Also, some of y'all suggested for my Thanksgiving video to throw the veg on the smoker as well. So we're going on with some carrots and a sweet onion. Easy work. I've got the damper to the smokestack nearly open because the wood is so wet, I don't really need to control the airflow to make this any smokier than it is. I want to ideally run these temps at about 250 degrees to start. I've got a water pan on the designated water pan shelf. Can y'all see how smoky it is in here? <laughs> This wood is very wet, but we'll let this rock out for a few hours and we'll check back in on the bones and veg. Beef ribs, I'll bring you back when the bark is set and they're looking good, but until then, let's close it down. Boom, shakalaka laka, boom shakalaka, hey. Gonna be a long one. Let's go watch those fires and those ribs and then make a stock. All right, y'all, about three hours into this cook, and I'm ready to take these bones and veg off and get them going in our stock pot so we can make that amazing beef stock. So let's see how it's looking. Up and under. Ooh, okay. Our bark is starting to set on our beef ribs. They're looking pretty good. Fat is starting to get yellowed, and the meat is absorbing all that amazing smoke. Time to get things like this off and into the stock pot. Just look how good that's looking. Some amazing beef bones that you're not gonna necessarily find at your average grocery store. Couple of tendons, smoky carrot. But next step is to finish up the stock. Let's go do it. To our veg and bones to make this stock amazing, we're gonna add the following things. Some peppercorns, a couple of bay leaves, a big old sprig of rosemary, and a big bundle of thyme. Some smashed garlic, and some celery that I forgot I had. Now we'll top this off with water. And now we're gonna go onto the stove for an extremely long time until we reduce this down. Then we'll strain it and we'll have our beef stock that we can then turn into a beef demi glaze. Let's get it started. Stock has been simmering away for about four hours now. It's got a nice dark, rich color to it. Nice and steamy. We'll let this go for a few more hours. We'll wait till you see the end product. Hmm, I wonder what everyone's gonna do this holiday season. Do, do. Do? Do rhymes with blue. What's that? You see a blue? Where? There's our blue. I hope y'all have a blue Christmas. Christmas. <sighs> Nothing says the holidays like a crisp cold Canadian Pilsner. Actually, we're about four and a half hours in on these beef ribs, and this is gonna be our last check-in until we wrap but four hours in. Let's take a gander. These beef ribs are looking great, absorbing a lot of smoke flavor, but they're still not dark enough or barky enough after four hours. Still waiting to get more pullback on the bones, but man, can't wait to try that. Spritz them just for good measure. All I did was move the beef ribs to the center of the cooker just so they can get a little more temperatures because we know it's a little hotter closer to the fire. All I did was spritz with some apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna do my best to bump up temps to about 275 to get these beef ribs darker and up to temp a little bit quicker. All that's left to do now is just close it down. Boom, shakalaka. Ah. Let's make our duck sell. Just going with a pretty classic duck cell here. We've got a bunch of baby bellas cooked down with some butter and some shallots. And we're just trying to cook all the water out of the mushrooms. As you can see, it's looking pretty watery. Still got a ways to go. At this point, I'm gonna go in with some fresh garlic, a couple sprigs of rosemary, and then back on the heat until we have a pretty nice paste going on. And all that water is cooked out. While our duck cell is cooking down, let's also cook down our beef stock. 
all of that work with the beef stock left us with about two quarts of stock, which is amazing. I'm gonna take one of these quarts and reduce it down to a really super concentrated beef stock or pretty much a beef demi-glace. So let's get it. But you can see this stock is a little liquidy, but also a bit gelatinous, looking really nice into our pot. Oh, and I did remove the fat that rose to the top onto the stove until it's looking dark and reduced. Our duck cell is looking nice and pasty, smelling amazing, and all the water has been reduced out. I'm gonna set this aside to cool. Then we can start to assemble our Wellington. Our beef stock has been simmering down for about 30 to 45 minutes and it is reduced by about half and it's looking really dark and concentrated. I'm just gonna transfer it to a container We'll let this cool and then we'll make our sauce for our Wellington. But first, let's assemble that Wellington. First, we gotta pick the perfect beef rib for this beef rib Wellington. Ooh I think this is the one. So in order to actually put this in the Wellington, we gotta get it off the bone. And there we have it. So what I did here was lay out about eight pieces of prosciutto and I tore every last one of them. It is quite fickle to work with. Now, on with our duck cell and give that a nice spread. And on with our beef rib. And now I have to weirdly roll this up, pinch these sides in, all packaged up in a nice weird log shape. Let's get to the difficult part, which is working with that puff pastry. I'm using a puff pastry from a company called Dufour. It was more expensive and I'm hoping that means it's gonna be easier to work with and more delicious. I'm gonna hit this surface with some flour. We're gonna have to roll out this dough a wee bit just to fit the size of our Wellington. All right, puff pastry rolled out onto some more plastic wrap and right onto our puff pastry. We're gonna start to roll this up as best as we can. We're gonna hit this with an egg wash to ensure a nice tight seal. I'm gonna trim up this excess, pinch the ends in, and we are gonna roll her up nice and tight. It actually looks really, really good for my first time making a beef Wellington. We're gonna chill this down. No decorative toppings, but I will do the Gordon Ramsay score the top method, then into the oven. And our Wellington is nearly ready to go, and I just realized that I forgot to paint the beef rib with mustard, but I don't think it's gonna really make a big difference. Not looking too shabby. We're gonna give this a couple of score marks that I saw Joshua Weissman do. We're gonna repeat on the other side, and then a little bit of a score down the center. We're gonna paint this up with an egg wash, and we're gonna hit this with some flaky salt. This Wellington is ready for a 350 degree oven until it's nice and golden brown. We don't have to check for any kind of internal temps, we just want that beef rib on the inside to be heated all the way through. So, into the oven we go. Our beef Wellington is out of the oven, and man oh man, she is a beaut for sure. Oh, you can smell all that garlic, the duck cell, the prosciutto, that puff pastry is a perfect golden brown. We gotta let this cool down for at least a half an hour. In the meantime, let's make our little pan sauce for our beef wellington. In with a little Cabernet Sauvignon, then some of our beef demi. I picked up a little veal demi glace from Marbled Meat Shop where I got the ribs. Veal is classic in this recipe, so I might as well add a bit. Gonna add about half of this container onto the heat to reduce it down. I say we slice on in. I am super stoked for my first beef Wellington. Let's see how we did. Oh, that is what I'm talking about, y'all. I can't believe this is my first beef Wellington ever. That looks amazing. Take a closer look at this. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful sight. That beautiful smoked beef rib in there. Look how tight of a bind we got. That duck cell's got a beautiful ring around there. The prosciutto's like melted in. This might be better than regular beef Wellington. I don't think the holidays gets better than this. Good Lord. Holy f Oh my God. What just hit my taste buds? This is the greatest thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. This is not horsing around. Man, how am I just gonna eat one piece of this? I have to eat way more than one piece. Every layer of this beef rib Wellington melts. The beef rib is cooked to perfection. It's so smoky and tender. That duck cell is this beautiful, earthy, flavorful, herby, garlicky paste that just kind of holds it all together. That prosciutto adds a nice saltiness. Remember, we didn't salt the mushrooms. We kept it low salt on the beef rib. This is so ridiculous. 
Got to add a little bit of this sauce. Yeah, that sauce is gonna add so much more flavor. Oh my God, a oh, nice little vessel for our sauce. Just give it a little dunk. I've never had a traditional beef Wellington, so it's odd for me to start with a non-traditional route, but I cannot imagine that a regular beef Wellington would be nearly as good as this. This beef rib Wellington is so good, I literally cannot stop. All right, one more piece. Gotta have some sort of self-control. Hello, gotta get a little. Dip, 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 dip. Mm, 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 mm. Yo, this makes me want to sing Jingle Bells, I swear. The star of the show, no doubt, is that beef rib from Marble Meat Shop. Melt in your mouth, it's cooked to perfection, reheated perfectly, and leaving that little bit of a fat cap on top did it a world of justice. Not only is it super fatty on the inside, but some of that fat leached out to actually fry the puff pastry. I'm about to weigh a ton after this Wellington. So I'm gonna go drift off into Wellington dreamland and think about a beautiful holiday song. Here we go. Well, that was a weird start to this dream. Yeah, we made a beef Wellington and it was a lot of fun. Spreading holiday cheer, yeah, to everyone. Wrap it up like a present, cook it till it's done. Serve this, yeah, to anyone except the vegetarian. Hang your stockings by the fire at night. Taste but soaring like when Santa takes flight. Make sure you know if you were naughty or nice. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night, uh. Thank you all for tuning in to Harry the Horse Barbecue. I really appreciate you checking out this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below. The horse went big for y'all this holiday season with this incredible beef rib Wellington. So hit that subscribe button. You know we got that crispy pastry on the outside of this Wellington. So go ahead and leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below if you've ever had a beef Wellington. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we're posting new content. And you can follow me on Instagram at Harry the Horse Barbecue. Tag me so I can see what y'all are cooking because it really inspires me to get outside and cook. And with that being said, there's only one more thing, y'all. This one, dip, is going straight to the horse's mouth. We'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Mm. 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 This makes an amazing holiday present. Make it. Mm.